Iran, a country bombarded with sanctions and maximum economic pressure from America in an effort to seize the regime's financial resources. The country's income from oil decreased and other trade was disrupted. The weak currency caused the prices of imported goods to soar, and job markets collapsed due to many factories closing. The economy is not in good condition at all. However, Iran is not yet as paralyzed as America would like. In reality, Iran has four decades of experience with sanctions and has learned to withstand their impact. And let's learn from Iran how the chosen strategy allowed its economy to grow strong. Talking about Iran's economic strategy, we are discussing its economic history. There are two phases, before and after the revolution. Before the 1979 revolution, Iran's economic development was rapid. Traditionally, Iran was an agrarian society that then underwent significant industrialization and economic modernization. However, the corrupt behavior of the Pahlavi government destroyed Iran's economy. After the revolution, Iran changed its policy by nationalizing assets for the purpose of economic independence, full employment, and a comfortable standard of living. Iran indeed enjoyed a very significant economy. Oil income became the backbone of the economy, reaching tens of trillions per month. Foreign debt was also not a problem for Iran. However, at the end of the 20th century, Iran's economy faced many challenges, especially a population increase of more than double. Added to this was Iran's choice of nationalization and the outbreak of the Iran-Iraq War. It is estimated that Iran suffered huge losses of up to $500 billion due to the Iraq War. Iran's suffering increased because in 1996, the United States government passed the Iran and Libya Sanctions Act, which prohibits the United States and non-American companies from investing and trading with Iran. As a result, the majority of the government's income from oil exports decreased significantly. Even Iran's economy experienced a budget deficit of up to 22%. The lack of opportunities led to increased frustration among Iran's lower and middle classes. After hostilities ceased in 1988, the Iranian government tried to develop the sectors of communication, transportation, manufacturing, healthcare, education and energy, including nuclear power facilities. Before the revolution, Iran had a mixed economy with a strong private sector and a heavy reliance on oil exports. After the revolution, the government nationalized many industries and implemented an economic system based on centralized planning and state control. One reason Iran survived the crisis was due to economic diversification. The economic embargo forced Iran to transform, focusing its economy on the service sector, which contributes about 57% of GDP. This is followed by the industrial and mining sector, contributing 19.5% of GDP, agriculture 10.7%, and construction 4.3%. Due to the oil embargo imposed by America on Iran, the oil sector only contributes about 8% of GDP. Iran also significantly increased its gas production, making it the third largest gas producer after the United States and Russia. Another advantage is that young people are the largest population group in Iran, with more than 60% of Iran's population under the age of 30. This automatically means Iran has a large domestic consumer market and a large young workforce. In the last two decades, Iran's workforce has become increasingly educated with university-level education. With Iran's young, highly educated population and global awareness, it will undoubtedly be a major driver of Iran's economy. However, Iran has also failed to provide jobs for its young generation. The current condition is that the unemployment rate among educated young people with a university education is very high. As a result, highly educated Iranian citizens choose to leave Iran because emigrants are attracted to educational and employment opportunities abroad. High and unpredictable inflation has been an endemic economic and social issue in Iran, contributing to increased poverty and social tensions. 
Since the 1979 revolution, government spending averages 59% for social policy alone, 17% for economic affairs, 15% for national defense, and 13% for general affairs. The root of the economic crisis is the failure of its political system. The ideological and geopolitical goals of Iran's ruling elite have led to external pressures, such as regional relationship tensions and international sanctions, reducing economic prospects and lowering social welfare. The gap between the rich and poor in society narrows due to monthly government subsidies, but this trend could reverse and disappear if inflation remains high. Interestingly, despite the decline in oil exports and tightening international sanctions, Iran still ranks in the top 50 based on its GDP. It must be acknowledged that the United States and its Western allies have successfully isolated Iran economically and diplomatically. However, this isolation has simultaneously pushed Iran to implement pragmatic diplomatic strategies that can reduce the impact of international sanctions. Iran has established economic trade and business relations with non-Western countries such as China and Russia. It sells oil regionally to neighboring countries not fully under the control of the OPEC quota system. Despite progress in the four decades since the revolution, Iran remains an underutilized market, losing opportunities and international investments worth billions of dollars. Iran's economy still faces several challenges that threaten its growth and stability. Sanctions and political tensions with Western countries continue to limit Iran's access to the international financial system and hinder its ability to trade. This causes Iran to be absent from the global supply chain, despite significant progress in industry, manufacturing, and science. Iran's economy still struggles with high inflation, a plummeting currency, corruption, and limited access to global markets. The poverty rate, which exceeded 25% in the 1970s, did indeed decrease drastically until 2013, but then increased again after a massive economic crisis and intensifying sanctions. Ultimately, the poverty rate has risen again. Although Iran's economic situation appears bleak, it is not without hope. Iran's economic potential is just waiting to be unlocked. Supported by a large and educated population, strong universities and innovative startups, Iran has shown resilience and flexibility in the face of change, as evidenced repeatedly over the last few decades. The challenge, though, is that despite having a large and educated workforce, Iran needs investment in key sectors such as technology, infrastructure, and manufacturing to fully realize its potential. As long as sanctions and tensions with Western countries remain high, the prospects for Iran's economy will continue to be uncertain, and its growth likely limited. One thing to note is that Iran indeed has an uncertain economic outlook. However, Iran is one of the largest economies in the Middle East and ranks in the top five countries with the highest GDP. Iran's main advantage over neighboring countries is that it has about 40 industries directly involved, making it unique in the Middle East. Iran has been able to subsidize inefficient industries with its substantial oil revenues and maintain a good growth rate. That's Iran's economy under sanctions. What if there were no sanctions? Iran undoubtedly has the potential to become one of the largest economies in the world in the 21st century. And now, after decades of political and economic isolation, Iran is re-entering the world stage. This has raised expectations, both internationally and domestically. Iran may not be the best choice for long-term investment. However, there are factors that could attract international investment flows. The Iranian government has created special economic zones to pave the way for foreign investors. These economic zones attempt to provide incentives for investment by offering tax relief for 20 years. The local business community in Iran hopes that the lifting of crippling sanctions by the United States will provide a temporary respite for the economy. But if that doesn't happen, the alternative is to strengthen partnerships with other countries, such as China and Russia which have emerged as increasingly important economic partners. 
But most importantly, if Iran does not effectively address various other domestic challenges, ranging from corruption to mismanagement of the economy, its enormous economic potential will remain unrealized.